Hey, this is Nick from JingFX, and I'm going to show you how to properly loop your simulations inside of Embergen. The cool thing about looping inside of Embergen is that it's actually a volumetric loop. So whenever you loop your simulation, you can view this loop from any angle, and it doesn't require any post-processing or anything like that. One of the downsides is if you have a giant fireball that's looping and, and rolling through the sky or something like that, we don't currently support looping for things of that nature. And then also things like smoke plumes, I can have difficulty from time to time. So you generally want to try and loop like a, a small campfire or uh, like a smoke puff or something like that if you're doing uh, looping for a game or a VDB or whatever. Uh, but with that out of the way, uh, in general, there are three different types of looping inside of Embergen, and we're going to go over those right now. The first and most simplest one is timeline looping. So if you uh, toggle this little key right here, this doesn't actually loop your simulation. It just loops the timeline. And so, for instance, if we have a key, and so let's uh, key our position, let's just key a Z height and then make it uh, a little bit high. You can just see it's actually looping the timeline, but it's not resetting the simulation or anything like that. And this definitely isn't going to loop your simulation either. So we can go ahead and turn that off. Let's go ahead and delete our key. And then uh, let's reset our position. So the next thing is and another type of looping where if we go to the simulation node, go under time control and then hit repeat simulation. This is just going to restart the simulation at whatever frame you tell it to restart at. And this is just so that you know you don't have to consistently hit R on your keyboard to reset or hit the reset button over here. So that's just a quick and easy automated way to repeat your simulation. Um, the next thing is actual looping. So if we wanted to actually loop this simulation, um, one important key to note for this is control R. So normally whenever you reset the sim, you want to go and just press R. Whenever you're doing looping, control R is very important so that we can break out sort of the loop range and reset the cache. Because if you change anything in any of the simulation parameters, so say, you know, buoyancy or something like that, we want to make sure that you update your cache. And so you have to press control R to break out of the main loop. Uh, because if you don't, whenever you reload the preset in the future, you're going to have a completely different loop um, whenever it resets itself by restarting the, the simulation from scratch. So with that out of the way, if we go to time control, we have loop simulation. And let's go ahead and set our, our, our sim to the max loop bound. And we'll do uh, you know, something like, let's say, 384. And let's go to this little dot and set it to, say, 1024. And probably by the time this tutorial is out, um, we'll have a, a much larger maximum loop bound so that you can just slide things around or whatever. But So what we want to do is set our initial loop bound to 384. And then let's do something uh, like 384 plus uh, 255. So 255. That's going to give us 639. The reason why it's 255 instead of 256 is the first frame is inclusive. So 384 to 639 is actually 256 frames. And so what we can do is we can control and mouse wheel on the timeline to see a little bit more frames. And so we're going to press control R and then reset. And now we're going to see here that the simulation is going to start looping. And so now it's actually showing you us the loop. And so we can see that it's a perfect loop. So every single time it loops through, we saw that cool little curl and there it is. And we can see a better loop if we turn off our ground and skybox. And so this is the actual loop that we're going to export. One key thing to note is your looping will not work if you have GPU particles, upscaling, shape particles, or turbulence. So if you have anything in the turbulence tab enabled, it's not going to work. Yeah, if you have anything in the simulation tab uh, for upscaling, it's not going to work. And then uh, if you're using shape particles, so if we just say shape particles, it's not going to work. And then in the volume node, if you have particles experimental, it's not going to work. Um, so with those limitations out of the way, uh, this right here is how you loop your simulation. It's really easy. Um, and then if we want to do a quick render, we can just click this right here. We'll say test. And then let's just save that. We want to overwrite that, sure. And then we can set our frames to, we know we did 384 to, um, and then let's do our number of frames to say, say 256. Um, and that's not going to fit, so we'll do 16 by 16. And then we can go to our camera. Let's set up our camera real quick. And so here's our camera view. And now we can check out our render. Here it is. We want to do just our render, 
to make sure that we see what we're really going to see. Let's go ahead and export this. And there's a thing. So we got to press Control R first to fully reset it. And now it will properly export our simulation. And this is a lot of frames. You can play with your frame stride and, and your loop bounds and things like that to get it right. Um, but if we go here and we click one of our frames, that will let us view our render. And so here we go. This right here is our perfect loop. And one of the quick things that I'll mention is that you can change uh, any of your curves here. So you can use linear, smooth step, uh, and this will just kind of change your blending modes. And so you might have uh, you know, better uh, blending with quadratic smooth step or quintic. Those are my two favorites. And uh, I would just not really touch any of the blending modes as dynamic blend is going to give you the best results. So that's just my quick tutorial on how to loop. If you want a more advanced tutorial on creating a simulation from scratch and having a real looping use case, I'll be showing that in the future. Uh, but for now, this is your quick tip on looping a simulation.